Hey everybody, it's Joe. I'm back out at Starbase. It's on a windy day and we are less than 24 hours after the successful launch of the uh, Starship yesterday and it was historic and highly successful for a number of reasons. One of which was the amount of interest that uh, the public had for this event. I think some of that may have been because of the successful catch on Flight 5 and a lot of people had heard about this more so than normal. So there was record-breaking uh, number of people here for the viewing over at Isla Blanca Park on the south part of South Padre Island was overflowing with people and cars, so much so that it took hours after the event for people to be able to leave. And that's because Isla Blanca Park has just uh, one entry and exit and also the causeway back over to the mainland was absolutely full. We also had President-elect Trump, his entourage, and all of the media that covers those types of events out here for the launch. So it was quite the spectacle, and uh, it was just really great to see the amount of interest in what was going on here with the launch. Now, behind me, you can tell that the tower does not have a booster hanging. And I know that's very disappointing to a lot of people. Some people think that that means that the launch was not successful. But I think uh, that is just missing the overall picture. And uh, I'll explain here momentarily why it was so successful. Now, I'm wearing this shirt. This is for Stage Zero. It comes from CSI Starbase. And Zach does a great job of talking about the ground support facilities here, the orbital launch mount, the tower, and all of this, which is encompassed into the term stage zero, is vitally important to what is going on with the Starship program. And it's uh, just as important as the Starship and the booster itself. And for yesterday's flight, the booster did not come back and land, and it had nothing to do with the booster, as we learned from SpaceX yesterday, but it had everything to do with the tower behind me and uh, some of the damage that it potentially had during the launch, which prevented the booster from coming back. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but uh, if you can take a look at the uh, images here, the top of the tower has a communications tower. It's uh, kind of uh, installed and supported by guy wires, and it appears that at least one of those guy wires broke during the launch yesterday, and uh, that uh, probably was one of the contributing factors to not being able to bring the booster back for a landing. Now, I think this might be similar to with aviation, uh, with uh, coming back for instrument approaches to the runway. They have something called an instrument landing system, or ILS, and it uses a series of uh, signals to help guide the aircraft in for a landing onto the runway. And I think maybe something similar is what's going on here with the tower and is uh, kind of important to bring that booster in for the catch. And if that was damage on the top of the tower, then that may be one of the reasons why they did not do the catch. You can also see that the chopsticks are down at the base of the tower. and. Uh, Basically, after the launch, they get into position for catch, and that started to happen yesterday, but then it was aborted, and then after the uh, booster came back into the Gulf, they brought those chopsticks all the way back down. So I think that's actually a really good indication that the chopsticks are working fine, and it really wasn't really that issue, but it may have been just that uh, damage to the uh, communications tower on the top uh, of this tower. So we'll get more information, hopefully, from SpaceX very soon and uh, we'll learn a little bit more. Now, as far as the launch is concerned and the mission profile, uh, pretty much every one of the mission uh, objectives that we had talked about before the launch and SpaceX had published uh, were met. We had a uh, on time, actually a little bit late uh, takeoff from the original uh, t launch time. It was at 4.20 Central Standard Time and all 33 engines lit and remained lit throughout the entire ascent up to hot staging. And uh, all of that looked uh, nominal, and uh, the uh, seems like the entire full stack performed exceptionally well. As I mentioned, the viewing was excellent. The conditions, the winds, the sky, the cloud cover really made for some excellent photography and being able to watch that entire launch. 
when it got up to the hot staging that also occurred nominally and uh, all six of the engines on the starship uh, lit and the starship continued on to its uh, orbital uh, trajectory meantime the booster successfully uh, did the uh, boost back burn all 13 of the engines and positioned itself for the landing now as you recall one of the criteria uh, for that uh, return to be caught was that uh, all of the systems, the telemetry, and the health of both the booster and the tower and catch systems had to be fine. And if that was the case, then the launch director, director would uh, uh, make that signal to tell the booster come back and land. And it looked like for a while that was actually going to happen, but then when they had the uh, health check of the tower, they discovered that uh, there was that issue potentially with the communication system and the booster was told to instead divert for a water landing and that is exactly what happened. So the booster came back, it did its uh, relight of all 13 engines to slow its descent after uh, basically going transonic on the descent back towards the ground and then after it uh, arrested its uh, descent rate uh, 10 of the engines turned off nominally, the last three remained lit and did that controlled soft landing into the gulf and uh, that just seemed like it worked exactly as planned. Now I think a great indication of the safety and the robustness of the program is that they are able to do that assessment of the health of the booster and the tower and make that decision and then safely bring the booster back for a divert into the water, which is one of the contingency plans. Now, going to the ship, after the hot staging, it continued its uh, journey up to its orbital uh, insertion. That was successfully completed. And uh, I know that some people will say, well, it's really just a suborbital mission, and that is very true. And that's just because they uh, intentionally kept the velocity just shy of orbital velocity, and that caused the perigee, or the lowest point of the orbit, to remain underneath the uh, surface of the Earth, so that would be a controlled and uh, natural return. So that continues to be part of the plan, and that will be probably through Flight 7, and uh, we'll see what happens after that. Now, another one of the milestones was to try to successfully relight a Raptor engine for a demonstration of that ability. That was successfully completed, and we got some great views from the engine compartment, seeing that uh, blue flame coming from the Raptor engine. And it did a prograde uh, boost, and that was just for the test. It probably lasted for about a second or two. Slightly changed the orbital parameters, but it still kept it uh, safely on a trajectory to splash down in the Indian Ocean. Now, another one of the big milestones for this uh, flight was testing the robustness of the controllability of the ship and also what would happen if more of the thermal tiles were removed specifically along the side of the ship and in some strategic locations to test to see what would happen and what get as much data as possible on uh, heat shield uh, missing and also just maybe different configurations of the ship with the heat shield tiles. And that was successfully completed as well and it gave them a lot of good data that they're gonna be able to use for future ships, especially when they configure that for a catch attempt with these towers behind me. And in addition to that, they tried some different uh, flight profiles, different heating uh, uh, arrangements of the ship coming back uh, through the atmosphere. And they also did a uh, slightly different uh, belly flop uh, pro flight profile to uh, pretty much test the envelope and expand the envelope of the aerodynamic controllability that was also very successful and gave SpaceX a lot of data that's going to help them upgrade and modify the simulations that they use for development of Starship and the future Starships uh, coming up very soon. Of course, the ship also was successful in relighting its three center engines, doing that flip and burn and having a controlled landing into the Indian Ocean. Fortunately, we got some great views all the way through re-entry to the splashdown from the ship and on the 
buoys that were placed along the uh, expected splashdown point. And that actually is another uh, interesting or important point to uh, highlight is that they placed the buoys in the location where they thought the ship would come down and it came down exactly on that location. This is the second time, uh, Flight 5 and now Flight 6, that they've been able to demonstrate high uh, degree of certainty and controllability of the return of the Starship to a specific point. And I think that's going to be uh, great data and also just a great ind indication of the maturation of the ship. And uh, really the, the great avionics uh, that uh, SpaceX has and the people that are making th those systems. So uh, overall, I think it was a, a highly successful mission. SpaceX got a lot of data uh, in various different flight regimes and in some abort contingency plans that uh, will help uh, inform and improve what they're going to be doing into the future. Now, speaking of the future, what can we expect? Now, we talked about this was the last of the V1, the first generation of the Starships. So the next Starship uh, will be Ship 33, and it is the first of the next generation. And we got a few images of that during the live stream. And these shots were taken over at Massey's during testing of Ship 33. And there's a number of changes that are involved with this ship, and I'll go into that in a different video. But uh, what we're going to see is most likely Flight 7, a profile very similar to Flight 6, but with that new generation ship, another splashdown in the Indian Ocean, and just verify that uh, the new ship is able to replicate what we saw with the older generation ships. And then uh, most likely Flight 8 and beyond, we're going to see a full orbital insertion, and that means uh, a catch of the ship back here at Starbase. So that looks like it's going to be happening uh, probably in the late spring of 2025, uh, Flight 8 or later. In addition to that, we're going to see some expanded mission sets beyond just catching the uh, ship and having it in orbit. We're going to see uh, deployment of payloads, most likely the V3 Starlinks. We're going to have to see some uh, testing and demonstration of on-orbit refilling capability and uh, just uh, continue with that and uh, we'll see what they do with the booster development. We have several more of the first generation of boosters to go through and uh, that will last uh, probably all the way through uh, flight uh, 10 or 11 with what they have currently and that will continue on and uh, it's going to be an exciting uh, 2025, I think an extremely important 2025 for Starship development as much of the techniques and capabilities and uh, just the hardware that they're going to be using in 2026 to go back to the moon, at least as currently planned, will be uh, tested, developed, and hopefully matured throughout 2025. So a lot to look forward to and I'm very excited about uh, the future here at Starbase, uh, the Starship program, what they're going to be achieving, and then just broader what this means for commercial space overall. So anyway, this is just a quick uh, overview of uh, what happened here uh, during the flight less than 24 hours ago and a little bit of a look forward to what we may be seeing in the future. I hope that you enjoyed uh, this discussion and I do hope that you got a chance to watch the launch yesterday. And one last thing is that if you are thinking about coming to Starbase, I highly recommend that you come as soon as possible because uh, you know things are going to continue to change, more construction is going to happen, we're going to be able to see less of the items that we normally have seen as that construction increases and just generally as this site continues to be developed uh, there's a potential that we'll have less and less overall access that we enjoy right now. So anyway if you're thinking about coming to Starbase I highly recommend that you do so. Uh, so anyway thank you very much for watching and for your support. I very much appreciate it and congratulations to SpaceX for another highly successful mission and uh, looking forward to the next one. Take care.